What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Form Check Friday. This is a very special Bryce is getting sick post-wedding post-worlds edition. Uh, we're also going to be filming the next three of these today. So uh, unfortunately we weren't able to, we didn't have the time or maybe lacked the foresight to load everything up onto the tablet and get the uh, sort of um, technology that we have used in the last few so this is gonna be kind of like the old-style form check Fridays it's just gonna be me and the TV uh, and we're just gonna be hanging out and chatting uh, like we used to so to start off with today we're gonna talk about Ben Yu's video from the last form check Friday and here he is there so this is the front angle view now we can see from the front angle view to me it looks like the stance might be a little bit wide looks like we're having troubles maintaining uh, good stack joints the knees are wanting to come in uh, and it just kind of looks like even just based on the length of your legs that a bit of a narrower stance might be beneficial might be an advantage the next thing I'm gonna say is a little bit more control in the bottom it looks like you're very much kind of just letting yourself go, dropping into the hole and then trying to recover. Uh, as mentioned in a number of these very insightful and helpful comments on the last Form Check Friday, that is something that will likely come back to kind of bite you in the ass when you get to heavier weights. It'll lead to inconsistencies in positioning. Um, and the last thing I wanna talk a little bit about is if we switch to the side view here, we can see a little bit of sort of butt wink, if you wanna call it that. Um, what I would do to work on that is basically just stretch in the bottom of your squat position with lighter weights on there with your warm-up weights uh, get into position get that low back extended extended make sure you're stretching the hips uh, in a specific manner and spend a little bit of time doing that in your warm-ups uh, and that should help build the mobility necessary to allow you to squat with a little bit more of a slight lordosis or even neutrality in that low spine so our first submission for today's video comes from Joey. Now Joey Noland is doing some deadlifts here and he says his biggest issue is that his back just feels completely fried after deadlifts. So there's a couple things that could be going on here. Number one, we might be a little bit too far out on the toes. Generally, if we put everything forward, it's gonna be harder for us to uh, leverage properly such that the posterior chain is going to do its job correctly. Um, when we get too far on the toes, we tend to get a little bit of a different action in the low back. We tend to get a little bit more exerted uh, and, and burnt or lit, uh, whatever you called it here. Um, toasted, toasted in the low back. Um, so I would work on getting that weight back on your heels just a little bit, trying to load up so that as you pull yourself into position, you can already start to feel some of the muscles begin to be recruited for the movement. So we should be feeling quads, hamstrings, glutes, lats, all that good stuff uh, before we even pick the bar up off the floor. It looks like we might not be pulling the slack out of the bar. Another thing that looks like it might be happening is that as you initiate the pull, you're starting to pull with your back. Uh, now initiating the movement with your back is going to put a lot of emphasis on your back It's gonna put a lot of focus on your back and it's gonna make your back do a lot more work than maybe it should If we can pull the slack out of the bar Which again is just pulling yourself into a position where you're starting to feel the necessary movements be or Sorry the necessary muscles be recruited for the movement uh, And then making sure that we're initiating the deadlift by trying to create this feeling of pushing the floor away less so uh, I want you I want you to Think about pulling on the bar less, and I want you to think about locking yourself into the bar, becoming connected with the bar, and then pushing the floor away. So by doing that, ideally we can get uh, sort of a priority set on the muscles that we want to be moving and, uh, you know, doing the majority of the, mo of the, of the exercise. Um, so those are probably the biggest pieces of advice I have for you. And the last one is gonna be, as you finish the deadlift, again, don't think about just pulling your back through. We want the trunk to be braced and stable and static throughout the lift. We don't wanna be really trying to reach with our back. We wanna be keeping all that locked in. And honestly, as soon as you get to about the knees, just squeeze your butt. Squeeze your butt, it's gonna extend your hips, and then away you go, Bob's your uncle. Um, hopefully that helps you Joey and hopefully we can get that low back doing a little bit less work and some of the bigger uh, more sort of ideal movement or sorry ideal muscles to be doing the movement doing the movement our next video submission is some de some more deadlifts uh, this time from Matthias um, now Matthias is 
Complaining of having some issues keeping his low back extended. We can definitely see it in this video. Uh, so there's a couple things that I think are contributing to that. Number one, definitely too far out on the toes. We can see the, the shoulders are quite far out in front of the bar. Uh, now I got a question on the last form check video asking if um, you know, I was I was opposing Ed Cohen's style of pulling and starting strength style of pulling by saying people's shoulders shouldn't be in front of the bar. Um, I think if you watch any proficient deadlifter, when they deadlift, their shoulders are going to be pretty much in line with the bar. If we're seeing the shoulders too far out in front of the bar, obviously there's uh, differences between people's mechanics and leverages and limb lengths and all those kinds of things. But generally speaking, why would we want our sort of point of contact for the body to the bar to be away from our center of gravity. There's no reason that we would want the shoulder out in front of something. Uh, if you're gonna get a, a crane to pick something up, you're not gonna put the crane over here because then when you pick something up, it's gonna swing out that direction. Same thing with the bar. If you pick the bar up with your shoulder out in front of the bar, the bar is gonna drift away from you. And I can't think of any deadlifter or coach or proficient uh, whatever, any, anybody who moves proficiently thinking about trying to deadlift with the bar out away from your shins. So a little bit of a rant, a little bit of an aside there, but Matthias, to get back to you, I think that's your probably your biggest issue, buddy, is we're, we're too far out in front of the bar with the shoulder, and what that's doing is it's creating a very long lever of the low back, and obviously your your low back, the the sort of uh, the lumbo pelvic region there, where your lumbar spine uh, meets your pelvis, is probably your weakest link. So that's the part that you're seeing flaws start to happen at. So if we can get that shoulder pulled back, get that weight shifted back just a little bit, that's probably going to help a little. Uh, now the other thing might just be that the load is a little bit out in front of what you can do with good positioning. And in that case, I would say lower the weight until you know until you can perform uh, a flat back deadlift versus a round back deadlift. And look at those movements as two separate and distinct movements. Obviously, if you if your back rounds on a flat back deadlift, excuse me, you've then failed the movement for all intents and purposes. So that would be an RPE 10 or whatever you want to call it there. So just another way to kind of think about the movement, uh, as well as try and get those shoulders a little bit back over the bar so we're not seeing that bar drift out and creating a longer lever than we need to out of your back. Our next video comes from Marco. Now Marco's doing some bench presses here. Now we can see on this set, um, this is his 160 kilo set. Now you can see what he's talking about here and he's, he's giving me some context, which is very useful, uh, is that he finds when he's getting strained and getting into higher RPs on his bench press, he tends to lock out his arms at different times. Feels like his right arm is weaker. Um, he said there's no noticeable difference in soreness, uh, no pinching or anything like that, no pain to indicate that he's doing anything wrong. He says he tries to go slow and use as best technique as he can. Now, number one, I think that as we get into higher RPs, generally we're just going to see things break down and to an extent that's okay. Um, so this might be getting a bit nitpicky. Um, and honestly, I don't really see many things, if anything, going wrong with your bench press. So, um, <coughs> what I will say though, is that from my experience as a coach, generally when I see people's arms lock out, uh, at a pretty distinctly different rate, what's happened is off the chest, we've seen one scapula start to elevate and get out of position. So your, oh, which side is it? Uh, yeah, your right hand is lagging a little bit. So I would try to film from the top down and see if maybe your shoulder's creeping up on that side. And obviously then we would try to make sure that that side stays as well pinned down in the shoulder blade as the left to try and get a little bit more of an even lockout. Um, like I said, I don't think there's much wrong, if anything, but maybe um, what's happening is we're getting a little bit out of position in that scapula on that side that's locking out a little bit weaker. So let's take a look at that and see if that is in fact what's going on.
Our next video comes from Sieben. Sieben? Sieben? Sorry, I'm not sure which uh, which is the correct, correct pronunciation. Uh, but anyways, we're looking at some of his squats here. Now, the biggest thing I'm seeing, uh, and we've dealt with this a couple times on the channel, so hopefully uh, you have some references you can look through, but as you initiate the squat, instead of allowing your torso to move as a unit and kind of tilt into the squat, you're just extending the low back, trying to keep your chest very, very high as you go down, and then as you hit the bottom, your structure, your flexibility, whatever it may be, is putting you in that position uh, anyways. so. What I would say is intentionally create a little bit more lean when you initiate your squat. Try not to reach your low back out ahead of the rest of your trunk. Try to keep those ribs down, let yourself lean a little bit, and that way you'll initiate the squat with the same torso angle that you'll have in the bottom. Whereas if you try to stay too upright, what'll happen is you'll get about halfway down and your body's gonna end up straightening itself out. So you'll get a shift in your trunk and in the bar position uh, and in the bar's relation to the rest of your body and the muscles moving the bar, uh, which can cause a lot of inconsistency and a lot of sort of weirdness, which may account for why you're feeling like your squats are kind of off. So let's allow the body to tilt as a whole as you initiate the squat, or sorry, the torso to tilt as a whole as you initiate the squat, as opposed to getting a disconnect where we're reaching that butt out behind you uh, and creating, um, I guess, a, a position where the body's needing to transition out of it to be able to achieve depth, which is something that's required of our squats. So uh, hopefully a little bit of bracing practice and a little bit of patterning and, and sort of motor learning, thinking about the movement differently, allowing that little bit of a lean goes a long ways for you. Uh, and hopefully that helps. Our next video for today comes from Alexandra, Alexandra Stott. Now it looks like she's at Fortis West here. Um, so shout outs to all the good people in Toronto. And let's take a look at your deadlift. So Alexandra, she mentioned that uh, she's 17. She's only been powerlifting for about nine months and uh, is just trying to get a good handle on technique, which is smart, that's fantastic. Uh, and I'm super stoked that you're as young as you are and getting into powerlifting. I really think that's cool. So Alexandra said she notices that uh, her bar path is pretty much straight, uh, although a lot of times bar path is, is less a uh, less something I'll analyze in, in the deadlift. Uh, but it looks, she said, feels like the bar is getting out in front of her a little bit. Now, I would actually agree. I would say that it is. And I think that uh, it's something worth examining. So it looks like what you're doing is you're sitting your butt, butt down a little bit too far to initiate the movement. So what's happening is your shins are pretty far forward when you start. And then because your butt comes back, your shins are moving away from the bar, creating space between the shin and the bar, which is then potentially at least, once you get heavy weights on there, gonna pull that bar out in front of you and away. So what I would do is I would start with your weight further back on your heels, start with your butt a tiny little bit higher, and that way you can anticipate that movement in your shin and keep that bar close. That way when you start the movement, it's gonna be straight up and back as opposed to that little bit of a shift that's happening before you initiate the movement. I would also probably cue you to make sure that you're trying to push the bar off the floor using your quads, you know, create that leg press feeling that I talk about all the time in every video. Um, and I think that'll go a long ways for you. But the biggest thing is just get that weight back on the heels a little more, push your butt back behind you, not sitting down, not squatting it quite so much. Uh, and I think that's gonna account for a lot of improved consistency in the starting position of your deadlift. With that, we're gonna leave you with Kirk. Now, I haven't even looked at the video yet, so I don't know what Kirk's doing over here. He could be squatting, bench pressing, deadlifting. Uh, he might even just be running and have trolled us with a hilarious video uh, of him running with a horse head mask on or something. It's possible, I don't know. Uh, anyways, Kirk is doing something over here. If you guys wanna leave your constructive criticisms in the comments below, we always appreciate being able to have a good discussion there. Every time I go back and check through the previous videos, um, I always am impressed and very, uh, very happy with sort of the community aspect uh, that we've been able to kind of build through these videos. And it's really cool to see everybody contributing and caring and getting along in a YouTube section uh, on the internet or a YouTube comment section on the internet. It's, it's unheard of. So keep up the good work. Uh, thanks to everybody who submitted. If you want to get your video looked at on our Form Check Fridays 
videos. Uh, you can submit your video to formcheckfriday at gmail.com. Uh, we do have a couple criteria. We want that to, we want it to be reps of three to five, 75, or sorry, 70 to 90%. Uh, it needs to be in landscape. Dylan? Ideally, but. Yes, ideally in landscape. Um, Please provide us a little bit of context if you have something that you specifically want to look at, uh, whether or not you compete, those kinds of things can be important. And what else was there? Was that it, Dylan? That's it for the, that's it for the criteria. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. We will be keeping up on these. Uh, we're filming three today, so they'll be coming at you each and every Friday. We will see you next time.